this demonstration is just to show you how water flows in the landscape naturally. I'm going to show what we've done to the landscape and then what we can do to repair it in a very brief way and people find this illuminating. So what we're just going to do firstly is we're just going to let that water trickle down a bit and just see and let it do what it does and to see where it flows, where it stops and that will replicate what, it actually, what actually happens in the landscape. You can see firstly that the water's not going down in one little channel. It's spreading out over that little bit of a slope and it's taking, you know, trickling there. You can see it's sort of crisscrossing and moving in there and moving there. And that's because we've actually got a little bit of cover on the ground with the, the, that bit of mulch layer. And that's just slowing things down and making it trickle. When it gets down there, it's gonna start rushing off but what we're really looking for, and this is what we're going to lead to later on this afternoon is in reading the landscape, is we're looking for what's called a step. And that's a place where water will stop and rest for a little bit. And in doing that, it'll deposit sediment and deposit seeds um, and any organic matter that it contains. And it actually then starts building on itself. So that first deposition, those seeds will germinate and they'll create plants and then the next event will come along and they'll hold a bit more sediment and a bit more seeds and a bit more organic matter and then that'll gradually build up. And we see that in the landscape, right across the landscape. So I'm just gonna try and point out a step. Oh, there's a classic. So you can just see there, it's circling around like that. So that's slowing the flow, it's dissipating the energy in the flow and that's just created by that little stick sitting on the on the surface there and there's another little one there and there's another little one there and then the rest is nicely dispersed it's beautiful actually <laughs> the, the perfect natural sy systems when we're reading the landscape we're looking for the signs of where that is occurring or has occurred and often it, that's been eroded out and I'm going to show you what we do when that happens and some of the signs of that is like where there's organic matter deposition and you can see it in the profile of the bank of the creek um, or it could be there are other signs like the vegetation type if it's marshy type means it's created that little pool above and the plants have grown in there uh, water tolerant so your melaleucas and your swamp she oaks and your um, flooded gums and those sorts of things and, and the other feature that we can show, see, look at, and we'll see one today, is like where there's rock or a cons natural constriction in the waterway through a rock bar or um, even just a clay layer that's come up near the surface. I am now going to be the white settler. Come in here, we've cleared the landscape, and after a little while it's started to erode and it's created that incised stream, so And you see there, nature's already trying to repair itself. It's created a little step there automatically. I didn't want that to happen, but anyway, it's quite nice that it has. You can see that from here, there's no water, very little water flowing over that section of the landscape. It's all flowing down that little channel I've created. I'm Farmer X, who's just said, no, we've got to, we've got to keep that moving. Well, it's actually created its own little, <laughs> another little step there, it's, which is awesome for this, but you can, you can see what's happening. You know, it's, the water's really coming down that middle and it is spraying out a bit because it's creating its own steps, which is great and it's fantastic. So in this particular instance, we probably actually don't need to do a lot because we've got the organic matter here and the materials and it's actually automatically already creating its steps, which is great, but that invariably is not the case because it's been cleared for 150 years or 100 years, that organic matter is just not there. The material is not there to build these steps again. So we need to come in and intercede a little bit on nature's behalf um, and do a little bit of work. So we're just gonna recreate these steps and I'm lucky here because nature's telling me where the steps are. I mean, they're right there. There's one there, there's one there, and there's one there where I've left a bit of stuff. So, and we go back and we're not going to try and build something here or there. We might as well build on what nature's already showing us and telling us. And in fact, I'm probably all, all I'm going to need here is 
a couple of stones and maybe a little bit of earthworks just to put a sill on this side. I'll just put another stone in there just to lock it up a bit more and demonstrate it a bit more. One of the things with the rehydration is that and with Malone is that we try and be rigorous about our design. So we would be saying, okay, what's the catchment area above this point where we want to build a structure? And what are the expected flows? And what are the really high flows that we could re receive? And we design that, the overflow accordingly. So that it, um, if when we do get those events, that it'll overflow safely. So obviously in a flood event, water will still go down there but we're aiming to try and divert at least some at this point. And this is why we don't do just one intervention. It's really like, like comparing between the farm scale and the catchment scale. That, you know, as Carolyn was saying, that Tony wanted was to look at the catchment scale because you can get so much more impact. It's the same thing. You know, we could do one, in, one thing there and we can help this little bit here, but in isolation, that little thing can be, um, vulnerable to floods or whatever. So that's when we start working, we might work a, a few structures down this slope. So let's put in another little weir on this step here. And it's, it's, you look at the situation and work out what it is. You know, we can work, be working with um, just a small gully with only a couple of hectares of catchment. And it might be that we just spread some brush and maybe pin it down. And that's, that's all we need to do, just to create that little step. It's a little bit hard to see, but there is water coming out these sides and it's starting to trickle back through. This, you can see water flowing here now, yeah. whereas it wasn't before. And that's quite, a, you know, it's quite a marked distance away from that feature that we've just put in. And hopefully the same thing's happening there. And, and if we keep working down, we can do the same thing. Because we're going on contours, it's not high velocity. And then the other thing is when we build that outlet, we build it with width. By width, you drop the depth, reduce the depth, which then reduces the velocity of the flow, and energy is related to the velocity. So if you're reducing the energy of flow, then it's not going to erode. There's another um, simple intervention we can do. You know, let's pretend, let's say that this area here, coming into the creek, there's another creek coming in here and it's bare and it's, and we actually have got a fair bit of water coming there. And it's bare and it's got eroded and it maybe even got a salt scald as associated with a hillside seep or whatever. And sometimes all we need to do is just put some organic matter there to, um, you know, hold that water, slow that water a little bit, encourage the water to drop any seed that it's got. And if you're smart, you'll use mulch that's already got seed in it. And so depending on what you want to grow, you could just put in old hay or straw or whatever, and that's always got seed in it. It'll be oats, barley, whatever it is. Doesn't matter, good. Um, or you can use brush. You know, if it's a wet area, you might use melaleuca brush. The melaleuca seed will drop out and it'll love that area because it's waterlogged and it'll grow. Or if it's dry, you might put saltbush brush or um, you know, something appropriate or a eucalypt or, or a mixture and that would be obviously better. So we've got to try and repli replicate that topsoil otherwise it's just going to be really really hard to get anything to happen. So that mulch helps to build that topsoil again um, and it provides that bed to work on. And in fact um, one of the stewardship project sites that we're going to be working on, the one up north, he's got 500 hectares of um, saline land which is completely unproductive at the moment and mulch is going to be one of the big ticket items to actually get that in a really strong productive um, area and you know that's 500 hectares out of 3,000 that he's basically not earning anything on at the moment. It's probably going to increase his productivity and his income by 20% something like that which is massive. All right because I like playing with mud because I'm a hydrologist I'm going to do another intervention that we often do, and this is one way we can really, um, you know, say that's the dr bare dry paddock that's dehydrated that we want to try and rehydrate. So we can build what we call contours, and they can be very simple. They could be just um, a hay bale rolled out on the ground, or it could be some logs, or we could go in with a grader or um, something like that. So I'm 
the excavator and I'm gonna dig a contour. We pick a step or somewhere where the water's stopping anyway. We're basically doing the same. We start with a, a sill. Key thing here, particularly if the catchment's quite large, is that um, we design that overflow so that it, again, it doesn't fail. Or in my terms, what I like to say is we actually let it fail safely because we know we are going to get an event bigger than what we designed for. So in those occasions, we need to design for, so if it, when it does fail, because it might, it will happen, it could happen next year, it might not be for 200 years, um, that there's no consequences of it failing. That it's not gonna take out this structure and this structure and that structure, and it's not gonna take out the house that's down the bottom there or the sheds or the stockyards or whatever. Um, so that's the key thing we need to look at. Anyway, so we're gonna extend this on a contour. So I've laser leveled this, not, <laughs> and we just go out Soil's a bit harder here than it was the other spot, but anyway. And I'm sort of, I think I'm getting it on the contour reasonably well. Now I'm gonna deposit here where there's that nice bit of mulch. And we'll go out this way. So what we've done here is I've just created a level sill and I make that as wide as I need to, but the wider the better. So that when the water does spill out, in fact, it's actually just leaking through my bank there, but, um, cause I think I haven't got it on the contour, but you can even see there, even if I did create, make that the sill, it's spilling out in a wide, so the shallow depth doing the same here, we'll just, so this is our dehydrated landscape. You see the soil's changed already. I'll get it past that little bare spot. We'll create a sill here. And, and because we're doing it on a exact contour, so the flow through here is not high enough velocity to do that. And when it does spill out, it's not, again, the velocity is not high enough to generate erosion. Um, and that water that spills out most of the time, it's gonna be absorbed in the landscape immediately below. It's actually not gonna run straight down. And of course, the other thing we can do with that is that on the downslope side of this contour, and like a lot of people have done with their grade banks, is revegetate re it, put vegetation in there. And as I said before, this bank doesn't need to be a excavator. The key thing is that it's on the contour, and if you were to go small scale, just with a, just a couple of bales of hay or straw or whatever, um, or logs or whatever's handy, um, you just need to be careful that uh, someone down there made a comment about water trickling through and actually causing erosion and that is a possibility with that sort of thing. If you get too much water down there, what you're actually doing with your log is you've blocked off that bit of flow and left the little openings which actually concentrate the flow which is what we, the opposite of what we want to achieve. So just have to be very careful about that. But it can be achieved. Pick a small area first. Do something where you know that doesn't get massive great big flows to, just to try it out with something simple like a a couple of bales of hay or some logs or some rocks or you know a combination of all three and a bit of dirt um, you know and then just see how it works for you but the key thing is normally we're looking to spill these out on a ridge one of the issues with the conservation works were done in the 70s 80s 90s was that they'd run the water but it would be run back to a creek so you're still concentrating the flow at some point so we're trying to actually get it out onto a ridge. So probably what I should do here is actually continue this out to about here. Because you can see there it's just slightly ridgy. So when the water comes there, it's gonna spill out that way. The water goes that way rather than that way and concentrates. 